Good morning, my name is Alessandro Cream and I'm going to present you the paper Classification and Generation of Microscopy Images with Plasmodium falciparum via artificial neural networks using low-cost settings. This work is the result of the master thesis of Rija Tony uh, Ramarorai, co-supervised by Esther Opokut at Ames Ghana. Uh, within the next uh, Einstein initiative, and I would also like to mention uh, Joshua Kumi, which is uh, working on the translation of the project uh, as a social entrepreneurship uh, uh, to self-sustain pro the project. Malaria is a mosquito-borne uh, blood disease still heavily affecting the Global South. So despite the current effort of, uh, on COVID-19, diseases malaria and tuberculosis are, are still among the most common uh, in the Global South. Many diagnostic approaches exist, like PCR and deep stick, but microscopy is still the most common method uh, of analysis in low-income countries. These generally require uh, staining of a blood sample and visual inspection. Machine learning techniques can be employed uh, to accelerate the visual inspection part, yet the data from labs are often uh, heterogeneous due to different protocols uh, and staining. And moreover, uh, realistic data augmentation could be beneficial for didactic purpose or to improve uh, uh, training in case of unbalanced data sets. A bit of a background, so microscope analysis can be performed on thick and thin smears, which you see here in this picture. Uh, with thick smears, a blood sample is simply collected and then uh, further analyzed, with, uh, while with thin smear, blood is further spread along these uh, glass uh, slides in a way that you, can, you will be able to see in a, on a microscope the individual cells. Nevertheless, cells are stained uh, and in, in for the identification of plasmodium uh, where you are supposed to find uh, a highlight, this, uh, some kind of features in the red cells. We propose a comprehensive approach to classify images with malaria plasmodium to generate images for didactic purpose and image translation and moreover we investigate the classification uh, if the classification improves adding synthetically generated images during the training. We tested several datasets, some of which requires image processing to identify the cell uh, to be tested. In this uh, graph uh, pipeline, we considered the, all, all the possible of parts of this of, of these systems, from which, from the image processing part to the um, classification, including also the generative model. More specifically, we use a simple deep learning architecture inspired by well-known convolutional networks architecture like uh, uh, Lenet and AlexNet which in case of uh, generating images of obviously further comprise two blocks, uh, which are the generator and the discriminator. We use the three datasets, which are publicly available and used in the past by other approaches also with for machine learning like support vector machines and BGG. One dataset was from cells from uh, thin stainings. Uh, more specifically, they were actually even uh, even already segmented the, the patches where were the individual cells. Another data set was uh, about made of images from thick stainings in a very uh, low resource settings with an expensive microscope and a mobile phone mounted. And they also provide uh, a general 3D printed model that you can use for mounting the mobile phone on a microscope. Lastly, we used a further dataset with thin smear to further challenge uh, even more our approach in the sense that uh, this was like a validation approach. Namely, we did not train the model on images from this dataset, but we used the model from the first dataset to see if it can generalize uh, with images totally different from the training set. And we call this approach the uh, mixed model experiment. We tested all datasets with the aforementioned uh, uh, discriminant uh, architecture, which was trained offline on a, uh, on a decent laptop, but then tested about the segmentation on a Raspberry Pi, which is an, uh, an expensive port, um, small computer with 
which will be useful in case of low, uh, low cost resource settings. Moreover, we generate some data uh, using the generative model and we show those, those data uh, to an experienced microscopy to see if we are able to trick him and if the, the, uh, is able, he will be able to distinguish synthetic data from the real ones. Lastly, we run the classification test adding some synthetic data set to see if there is any kind of improvement in the classification. Those are the typical results we selected from a, randomly sele a couple of randomly selected um, images where you can see here these uh, small dots are the red cells and with yellow we marked the candidate images that we, uh, we, we found through some, the, some steps of uh, image processing like uh, watershed and you see the red is the results in case the, then the further the deep learning architecture was able to classify it as containing a plasmoid or full malaria or not and blue is representing like the ground rule in the sense that it's the uh, labels telling us if there was really um, a plasmoid in the, in the red cells. This is the results on the mixed models, the one I was telling you that as not, we are using images that were not uh, uh, used during the training and you can see here again in yellow the results of the uh, watershed and then red and blue represent uh, if uh, uh, the, the further the deep learning architecture is considering the candidate cells as containing malaria or not and blue is the is the ground true annotated by a microsco um, microscopist. These are our results so we had uh, fairly good uh, accuracy. Further we Compared our, we compared our uh, results with like uh, a previous uh, research which was using uh, a VGG, another convolutional neural network architecture, using similar data sets and we found that the results were uh, similar. So we, are, we found obviously in our case the accuracy was higher but we don't know, want to speculate that our model was better also because we cannot prove that this is uh, these differences are statistically significant or if they are like specific for this data. We will like conclude that we, our results are comparable to the state of art. Moreover, if we consider the comparison in the, from the point of view of computational time, it's been reported that for a microscopist, the amount spent for a single uh, image analysis to, for a single person, we, it, it took around fifth, between 50 and 30 minutes. Of course, depending on the on the microscopies and also on the general workflow that the, this person has, uh, our approach, so considering including all the image processing analysis, was uh, about one minute in computer, common computer, while on the Raspberry Pi four was uh, less than ten minutes. These are the results of from uh, the generation. So I would like to challenge you because some of them are uh, synthetic and some are uh, real uh, images segmented from real images. Any guess? So the real were the F, H and J while practically all the others were synthetic. And this was even challenging for a microscopist and we believe it's because uh, looking at the individual cells you don't see the context. These are the results for the thick, uh, thick staining. If you look closely, there is some kind of ringing effect, especially in the red cells. So not much in the other cells, but the red cells. And this, this was allowing the microscopy to still uh, qualitatively distinguish so, uh, the, um, the, the synthetic from the real images. Lastly, if we, we included 5,000 synthetic images in the individual cells and we found a slight improvement, which again we are not, we didn't went into details if this was uh, statistically significant. But anyway, we also think that this was already a, an easy task in the sense they were already fairly enough uh, samples to train the model, so the differences will not be that remarkable. In conclusion, our results are comparable to the state of art. With the simple generative models, we can obtain uh, fairly realistic uh, images. And we also show that this entire procedure, at least of the classification, can be used on an expensive device like a Raspberry Pi.
Future works include continuous uh, localization and detection of, of, of the red cells. Moreover, probably using more advanced uh, uh, generative model like uh, StyleGAN, StyleGAN2, we should be able to obtain more realistic images, which will probably trick even more the microscopy or a pathologist. And as a further step, we also have the to validate in fair real, uh, real world. These are the main reference used in this work. I would like to thank you for your attention and let's uh, continue our effort to eradicate malaria.